Hello and welcome to a King Jeffrey War Review. We have two wars today and we're going to, have to take a little bit of a look at the Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10 raids from the first one and then the second one, the more recent one that we just finished yesterday. For that one we'll concentrate a little bit more on the Town Hall 9 raids so we'll mix it up a bit, show a few Town Hall 9s, a few Town Hall 10s and a few Town Hall 11s. So let's have a look here we are, 180 war wins now, so doing really well, 180 wins, 21 losses, and I think we have one or two draws, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the war log. As you can see, it's going pretty well. The last two wars, Bulgaria and Luso war, um, both these clans were pretty good. They were both very difficult wars. Uh, there was a number of three stars on town or tens from the enemy in both wars, but we got more, so... That was pretty good. We'll start with Bulgaria. Now we'll have a look at this one. Let's see here. We have 78-73 victory. Um, we did think it was going to be pretty tough. It looked pretty rough a lot of the way through because they had a lot of uh, level 3 witches and a lot of high level Town Hall 11s. But in the end, we won it. The Town Hall 10s as well were very high level. So that made a... That made a change actually. The last two wars have been very difficult compared to the previous few that had been very easy. So, let's have a look at the stats. What we got here, we got, like I said before, 78-73 victory. Total destruction, 84.73% versus 82.93%. Um, best attacks, three stars. We've got 18 three stars to their 14. 12 two stars to their 15 and they did actually only one star one of the bases I think that was Conrad they only got the one star and let's have a look at the most heroic attacks Wuxia on number six uh, Wuxia, sorry Wuxia is number six so her attack is the most heroic so what should we do let's have a look at the war events how it ended uh, they got two stars on Broom at the end. They couldn't three-star Paul Lord, who was a 9.5. He had one Inferno for this war, I think. Um, they three-starred Josh at the end. They three-starred Wuxia, their number one. Wesley got two stars. So they did pull the stars out at the end, but they couldn't get enough, and we, we won it 78-73. So we have a look at their war map. So as you can see, all the Town Hall 11s two-starred. Number 8 and number 9, the top two town or 10s, were three-starred. And number 15, number 16, and number 17 were also low town or 10s. They were also three-starred. And then, as usual, all the town or 9s were three-starred by town or 9s. Let's just have a look at their clan for a second. 178 wins they had. Uh, the sort of what we were dealing with. 40-40 heroes, level 18 ward and level 3 witches. And he had a 1,000 war stars. Their number 2, 40-40, 17 warden, level 3 witches, 854 war stars. Number 3, level 40 queen, 13 warden, level 3 witches. Number 4, level 40 queen, level 8 warden, level 2 witches. And, you know, so yeah, pretty tough going. So, anyway, less of that. Let's have a look at some raids. So, who shall we start with? Well, I'll take a look at number three. They had a lot of anti-three-star bases. So, what we're going to do, we'll have a look at the raids on the non-anti-three. And here's the first one. This is Broom. He attacked their number three. And he's going to do a sort of mass witch attack. Two golems. Maybe three golems. No, I think he had two golems and witches in the clan castle. So he goes in at the side. It's a pretty nice raid because Broom's a new Town Hall 11. So he has, he's only got a level 5 warden. And he only has level 2 witches. So this was a pretty good raid. The only mistake he made, really, was that he didn't freeze the multi-inferno. He froze the single inferno instead. But I don't think the multi inferno really took many of his witches out. As you can see here, still got loads of witches left. So I don't think it really made much of a difference in freezing the single instead of the multi. 
because he didn't lose many witches because of that. And there we go, that was good, 60%. Nice raid on a base that we thought might be a bit tricky. So what else we got? Let's have a look at Matt on number 5. So, this was sort of an anti-3. With, yeah, I guess it's an anti-3. But, it's maxed town all 10 defences apart from the new ones. He's got a couple of maxed wizard towers. Um, what else has he got? He's got the eagle. So, you know, maxed the town all 10. Level 34, 35 hero. So, not easy. But he does a good job here. Town all 10s on town all 10 anti 3 star bases are very easy to get 2 stars. But they're not that easy on these town all 11s because what happens is when what you want to do is at the end you want to do clean up because usually there's quite a lot of percentage for clean up on these anti 3 star bases. But the problem is with the eagle, if you don't take out the eagle, then that's going to kill all your clean up troops. So you have to sort of clean up during the raid, which makes them a little bit more difficult. That was a nice raid from Matt. So let's have a look at another town or 10 on town or 11. He's Wesley. So Wes is our lowest town hall 10. I think he was our lowest town hall 10 in this war. Might have been one person lower than him. Not sure. But he only has level 20 heroes. So Wes does a lot of mass drag raids. Because then, you know, heroes don't matter so much then. So let's have a look. So this was their lowest town hall 11. Obviously, as you can see, not the most upgraded. This one, a little bit rushed. And they had some lower Town Hall 10s as well that were a little bit, not rushed, but they were new Town Hall 10s. They did have more Town Hall 10s than us, though. So, Well, not more Town Hall 10s, but Town Hall 11 Town Hall 10s went further down the map than it did for us. I think they had like two or three extra, something like that. I'm not sure. Might have been two, actually. So that was, we were a little bit worried about that, that if we didn't get any Town Hall 10 3 stars and they 2 starred all our 10s and 3 starred all our 9s, that they'd basically win just because they had more, more high level bases. So there's Wes, 2 star on the bottom Town Hall 11. So let's have a look at some raids on Town Hall 10s. We'll have a look at the three stars. We'll have a look at DJ, Brad, and Ars three stars. So we'll start with DJ, who people remember DJ used to be called DJB. He was a previous member of ours. He's come back. He left quite a while ago. He had a bit of a fallout with Nick, but let's be honest, who's not fell out with Nick once in a while? Uh, Nick long gone now. Nick doesn't play anymore, so... So this is a Mass Witch Raid on this very, very popular base. And this base really does not stand up very well at all to Town Hall 11s. So what we try and do, we try and get our Town Hall 10s to take out the Town Hall 11s. So that frees up our Town Hall 11s to attack the Town Hall 10s. Uh, we only have a couple of Town Hall 11s at the moment with max witches. We actually have three now. So, but at the time of this war we only had two. So it's good if we can get at least get those attacking the Town Hall 10s so they can three star. And this, a very nice raid against a base that, well, I mean this base has been around for a long time and it is... It's probably one of the most used bases and one of the most annoying bases in Clash of Clans. But it's also one of the most often three-star bases. So it's very hard not to use it, but it's hard to use it, if you know what I mean. You don't want to use that base, but you keep going back to it because it defends so many, so many two-star attacks. But when somebody hits it with a three-star strategy, then it's done. So Brad on number nine. And this is another three-star on again. A similar base. Same strategy. 
the mass witches. I mean, this is a this type of base is a base that used to get three starred quite a bit. Uh, well, not quite a bit, but occasionally would be three starred by mass witches uh, in the past before the six golem strategy came about. People used to try and do it with witches, and it did get three starred quite a bit with mass witches. So now with Town Hall 11s having the Warden and an extra level on the Witches, it's absolutely lethal against against bases like this. So you will not see us using this base anymore. Queen going around the bottom, Warden and all those skeletons, and then there's that Archer Tower up the left hand side, that's all that's left. And boom, he's three starred. So very nice, three star by Brad. Who we got next? Brad as well is another new member, he's a friend of DJ, he came first and then brought DJ back so... <clears throat> it's very good. Number 16. Ron on number 16. Another three star. This is one of their lower level bases. Uh, one of their new fresh town hall 10s. But this guy was matched on our side with a town hall 9. So still stronger than what we had. So killing the clan castle first. Anti three star base, of course, but still going to get three star. Not sure if it's always that good for the uh, lower town hall tents to have anti three star bases. I mean, we do it because it defends against. If, if they get hit by people their own strength, then they're not going to get three starred. But at the end of the day, if they get hit by people their own strength, they're probably not going to get three starred anyway, no matter what base they have. Uh, the problem is with these, like you can see here, you put jump straight through the base, and the, the troops and the heroes can just walk straight through that base because there's so many big open compartments around the outside. It was close though. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't an easy three star, but he did get a golem stuck somewhere, and you know the raid didn't go exactly as he planned it to. But he still got three. So it's hard to know when to use anti three star bases and when not to. I mean, I think we've won quite a lot of wars by sticking to our anti two star bases when we've come up against people that do have anti three, because they have the anti three, and basically we two star them all first try. And then that gives us more attempts at clean up. So, yeah, I think we won the next war actually. If we had had all anti three star bases in the next war, I think we'd have lost it. I think the fact we had anti twos sort of made things a little bit more difficult, even if we were more three starable. So, yeah, um, that's it for this war, I think. Don't think we need to show any more. Uh, war hero. I'm going to do what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop doing the four war heroes. Uh, you'll have to let me know what you think about this, whether you want me to go back to that or not. But I'm going to give one war hero per war, and um, just to the one person I think stand out. Um, in this war, I would say Bradstock because he got a 91% on number eight and 100% on number nine. So Bradstock will get the award for war hero. Makes it a little bit more prestigious having just one person. Quick look at the stats again. As you can see, 18 three stars. I think five of those were Town Hall 10s. So pretty good war. Really nice. So, shall we have a look at the one against Luso War? Now, Luso War, these guys had a very good record. Um, 195 wins. I'm not sure how many losses. I think they got something like 50, 60 losses. But I'm talking recent record. They had a very good recent record. And they'd fought some very high level clans. And they, they were good. They had some some very high level players. 
40, 40, 15 euros, 40, 46, what have we got, 32, 39, 8, number 4, 40, 40, you know, they, these guys had got some very high level players, again, they had more, their town or tens went, went further down the border than ours, <clears throat> so it was pretty tough, let's look at the stats in the end, we won it by two stars. We got 16 three stars to their 15. 14 two stars to their 14. And in the end, these guys actually left one base with only one star on. Because what these guys did, you look at war events, last moment attacks by them. And with three, four, six, six minutes left, nine minutes left, so many attacks they saved till right at the end. I'm not sure what that was all about, but... They basically two-starred all our Town or 9s, uh, Town or 10s, pretty much straight off the bat. And then there was a huge gap, like 14 hours before they did their second attacks. Don't know what that was all about, but then by the time they did their second attacks, they were all rushed and I think it cost them the war, to be honest. Total destruction in the end, we won on that. But yeah, it was it was a tough war. So let's have a look at some raids here. Like I said before, this one I'm going to show more Town or 9 raids, but I am going to show a couple of Town or 10s. I'm going to show DJ on this base, on number 9. Anti-3 star base. And he gets 3 stars. But the interesting thing is, I want to show this because... I was actually at the supermarket when he did this raid and I was watching it on my phone uh, while I was trying to do the shopping. And halfway through it looked like it was going to be a two star and about 70%. Uh, Queen, I think his heroes were dead, most of his witches were dead and he got like the warden left and that was it. So basically I, I left the replay and went about doing my grocery shopping and all that. And then when I logged on later and looked at the uh, war stats, I saw that it was a three star. So I just want to show this, how this actually happens, how he gets the three star, because I missed the end of it. And I'll be honest, I still haven't seen it. So here we go. It's queen. Queen dead. King's over the other side. And the warden. So the king goes with the warden there. All his golems dead. He's got one wizard, one witch, a nearly dead king with no ability, and a warden. And a crossbow inside two walls, a cannon, and a tesla. So, as you can imagine, I left this raid when the king was over the other side of the base breaking his way out. But as you can see, you look at this now, King's dead, and there's that crossbow still there. Witches are dead, only thing left is the Warden. And, or actually the Skeletons, the, yeah, so there you go, three stars. A few Skeletons left that the um, crossbow was shooting at, and then the Warden with his range was able to take out the crossbow. So, a bit lucky, but fun. And then, another three star. And this was Easy Rocking, with a three star on number ten. Another anti-three star base. Good Town All 11 attacks are very, very strong, it seems, on Town Hall 10s, especially if they have high level Wardens. They do some serious damage. So it doesn't seem to matter if you have anti-3 or not. If a good Town Hall 11 attacks your Town Hall 10 base, it, it looks like you're going down, really. So I think it's just a matter of strategy and trying to free up those big hitters. Which means your lower guys have got to do the business higher up. This was a nice raid. Very nice free spells. It actually uses the Warden ability very nicely as well. As you can see, uses the, the free spell, runs out. As soon as the free spell runs out, he uses the Warden ability. So that acts as like a free spell again. And then, by 
by the time that wears off that multi inferno has gone down and there's still a lot to do at this stage but he's got plenty of witches left he's got both heroes there's king's dead I think no no he's got both heroes uh, king's just used ability he's got his queen at full health warden at full health he's still got lots of barbarians skeletons got wizards going around the outside so nice use of that jump spell there and it was a very nice raid As you can see, I mean, if you were thinking, like, a Town Hall 10 raid, if this was a Town Hall 10 raid, then everything would have been dead a long time ago. But because of the very good use of the Warden there, he managed to get the three stars. So a really good attack. So let's watch some Town Hall 9s, because these Town Hall 9 bases were actually really, really strong. And we thought we'd struggle on them, but our 9s and 9.5s did actually clean up all the Town Hall 9s. And what I'm going to show now, I'm going to show 5 Town Hall 9 attacks. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show the 5 Town Hall 9 attacks that were 3 stars on fresh bases. When I say fresh bases, I mean bases that weren't hit before. So all these Town Hall 9 attacks you're going to see now... We had no idea where the bombs were, no idea where the traps were, we didn't know what was in the clan castle, nothing like that. These are all attacks on fresh bases. So all we can do is guess where the bombs are and stuff like that. So let's watch. This attack by Ray, um, this is an example of what can be done as a Town Hall 9. Now if we look at this base, this looks a pretty difficult base. Now Ray has an army here with all sorts in it. He's got wizards, healers, hogs, he's got valks, he's got dragons. He's got all sorts. Um, oh actually no, he doesn't have dragons on this one. But you know, he's got everything. He's got a bit of everything in this um, in this army. But the thing is, and he didn't know where the bombs were or anything like that. But the thing is, he spent two hours must have spent two hours planning this raid speaking with Arabian Beast about it and they went through everything and yeah I think it took him about two hours planning this raid and if you look how many different parts there are to it I mean, first of all there was the Queen and King at the bottom and then there was the sending the hogs in to lure out the clan castle and he set those bombs off in those places where there could be bombs and then up north he then sends in King and Kill Squad to take out the heroes in that area. Then he sends the rest of his hogs in west and gets the heel down. And it actually ends up a pretty, a pretty not straightforward, but a pretty easy three star in the end. But it wasn't easy to, to plan and it wasn't easy to pull off. But that's what you can do. If you plan properly, if you look at a base for a while and, you know, that was a great attack and it was a fresh base. That's a hit on a fresh base. So what we got next? Beast on number 20 on Pedro. So this again, this one wasn't as smooth an attack as the other. In fact, quite a few things went wrong on this one. But again, it was a fresh base. Not been attacked, so no idea. Well... I say no idea, you can, you have an idea where the bombs are, but you can't know where they are. Obviously Queen's over the east side, so we've got to assume that the giant bombs are going to be somewhere in the west area. As soon as the heroes are the other side, the king's up by the north side. So, in he goes with the kill squad. Queen heads off around the outside, he didn't want that, he set off one lot of double giant bombs which obviously thought were going to be there so the other set must be north I guess, there and they, well yeah, 
that set of double giant bombs killed half his hogs. So obviously he didn't plan that. But he had enough hogs to take care of that and it didn't bother him. And he ended up with three stars anyway. But another three star and a fresh base. I'm going to show these because the last two wars it's been noticeable that the enemy very very rarely if at all in both the last two wars actually three starred any of our town or nines first attempt all of them were second attempts so nearly every first attempt by the enemy were fails and then nearly all their second attempts were three stars but all these ones I'm showing you of ours are first attempts as I've said like probably 30 times now so I'm going to stop saying that I think you get the idea so Muxi on Long Tibber number 22 another tricky looking base these guys had a lot of Town Hall 9's with max heroes, maxed walls, max defences so do we I think actually for a change we usually have the Town Hall 9 advantage we usually we've usually got better heroes at top we have better walls mostly in these in our war matchups but in this one I would actually say that these guys had the advantage they had actually more high level heroes all the way down than we did so you can see here Muxi is sending the dragons in at the bottom and then the hogs, once the queen's down, they go down the side. Kill squad's in the middle, still going. Queen's in the core, drops them heels very nicely. So many hogs left. Another really good attack by Muxi. Muxi is very, very good. He's in fact when you watch Muxi attack it's almost like watching Ray attack because his attacks are very very much like Ray's I think he must have learnt a lot off watching Ray so so what we're gonna watch next we're gonna watch J-Dub on number 23 I nearly said it again I'm not going to Fresh base. He's in. Wall breakers in. Golems in. Queen, is she gonna go in? Or is she gonna go for the camp? Ah, she's in. Hound is dead. King's in. That's the core gone. these uh, earthquake raids if there's something seems to be a common thing with the successful ones not only high level heroes obviously but the king ability being used early it seems to because once the king's health is getting low he doesn't cloak like the queen does so once he gets targeted he's still targeted even when you rage him so when he's raged with low health you don't really get the benefit of the rage because usually he dies pretty quickly after I've noticed quite a lot of these with the kill squad when the king goes in if the king's if the king gets raged before he goes charging into the middle like say when he's got half health or just above half health if he's raged then then his health goes more or less right up to the top again and then he he kicks some ass really so that's something I've noticed a little bit, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it seems seems like that. Maybe it's common knowledge, I don't know. Maybe maybe everybody knows that. So anyway. So Glorp. Now Glorp is going to do a Golaloon on number twenty-eight. So you can see this is their number twenty-eight. And he's got max town on nine defences. His heroes are can't see here what level they are. I think the queen's level twenty something. King level fifteen. I'm not sure. 
Glorps Hour 28, he's got 15-15 heroes. And this guy's got a lot of lava walls. Pretty strong, strong walls. This guy actually didn't have an anti three star base. This is one of the very few that didn't. Most of them did. Maybe the bottom two might have been non anti three bases. I mean, it still has double giant bombs and all that, but the whole thing with it being symmetrical, it makes it pretty obvious where the double giant bombs are. It makes it a lot easier to attack with it being symmetrical base because you know everything's going to go through the base a certain path. It's quite easy to get the path in right then. If it's very non-symmetrical and there's defences all over the place and you can't, it's not, you know, you're not sure where everything's going to go. You're not sure where you want everything to go. Some places in the base are more heavily defended than others and it makes things a lot more difficult. But it's still a good attack by Glorp because Glorp's only got level 15 heroes and this is a really nice, really nice raid. Personally I think air raids are more difficult than pog raids. Mostly because of the the speed of the balloons. It, it seems, I don't know, I just... I can never get on with these air raids. I just my balloons just never go. I never get them in quick enough. So great raid, and that's it. That's the last replay. So who's going to be war hero for this war? I think for this war, the war hero is going to be Ray, for two reasons. First reason that raid on number seventeen was absolutely brilliant, and the second reason he had. A lot more work on him this war. Uh, May was very busy, so May couldn't deal with the air attack plans and stuff like that. Uh, very nice for Arabian Beast. He been promoted to elder because he helped out a lot this war with plans and stuff. And obviously, Eod as usual, and Butter and a few of the others all helping out as well. So yeah, it was a great result. 76-74, unbelievable win. We thought we were done for. Like I say, a very good clan, very strong clan. But we won. 16 3 stars, 14 2 stars, 0 1 stars, 3 attacks lost. Pretty good. Wesley with most heroic attack. Eod with most heroic defence. Eod actually defended 2 town all 11s uh, with 1 Inferno. So, not bad. So, yeah, that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll have a quick look at the Warlog. There you go, you see we lost to that Chinese clan that cheated. And then, yeah, a lot of wins, so Regulators Elite, and then that we had that spell where we had a lot of mismatches. But yeah, mostly green, all very nice. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. It went on a little bit longer than I expected, as it always does. But hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon for another victory, I hope. Goodbye.